In this module, we will know more about Salesforce PowerDot Connector, different way to manage it, how to unpause it or resume it, and what are the different connector level settings being a PowerDot admin or an end user you should be aware of. So without any further delay, let's directly dive into it. So once you logged into your Pardot account, right? Once you are in your Pardot account and if you're setting up it for the first time, you just click on this Pardot settings tab, click on the connectors. Then if you look for the Salesforce Pardot connector, this will be initially in pause state. It means no data will be syncing back and forth. To give you a bit of, bit of, bit of clarity about this Pardot connector user, you do, not need to wor you do not need to worry about any license and user, all those things. It will be done automatically for you. So this is the connector user, basis of data sync, or you can call it bi-directional data sync between Salesforce and Pardot. So if you're okay, I mean, if you have implementation, you're, if you're all aligned, I mean, your Salesforce admin, Pardot admin, if you're all good and wanted to go ahead with the um, sync, right? You wanna start the data sync, you can simply click on this gear icon and click, click on this resume sync. Once you click on this resume sync, uh, data sync will start happening. Um, it is very much important to know what are the different things or different settings which are available at the Pardot Salesforce connector level. Just come to this page, click on this gear icon, click on edit settings. Once you click on this, it will take you to this page. So if you see, this is the standard provided by Pardot, Salesforce Pardot, standard connector user. The first settings is automatically create prospect in Pardot if they are created as a lead or contact in Salesforce. As you know, when it comes to syncing data between Salesforce and Pardot, right? Like we have lead in Salesforce, we call lead as prospect in Pardot, right? So Pardot is a potential customer or anyone who is showing some um, uh, interest in our business um, or showing some interest uh, in what we sell, whether it could be a service or, or a product. So what is happening is this Salesforce connector is not retroactive in nature. So it will only sync lead, which got created, lead or contact, which got created after this connector has been established or kind of you have resumed the sync or kind of you have connected Salesforce and Pardot or you have activated Pardot in your Salesforce org. And if you want that to sync, right? If you want like, okay, whenever a new leader contact is getting created in Salesforce, you want that to sync with Pardot, make sure like you have checked this checkbox, which will be automatically checked. And you can also check sorry, you can also check select uh, appropriate campaign. So what I was talking about, this is not retro retroactive in nature. So what about the existing lead and contact record? So for all the existing lead and contact record, you need to do one time import in Pardot with the CRM ID, which is lead ID or a contact ID. So I was talking about this prospect may sync with a lead record or a contact record. We'll talk about the sync logic and all maybe in the next course or maybe later point of time in this course, like what are the different data model or data we have in Pardot and what are the different data we have in Salesforce, how both are syncing together, what is the backend logic. Uh, <clears throat> so here we only will be to the point. So prospect may sync with a lead or a contact record. Right, so that's why we talked about this particular first connector level settings. 
Second is like, it, you know, in Pardot, email is used as a unique identifier. So if record do not have the CRM ID to match when syncing, I mean the syncing data between Pardot and Salesforce, use email address to match. So if you're checking it, right, and if there is any um, prospect in Pardot who doesn't have the CRM ID, then that, and Pardot will use the email address to sync with the um, Salesforce. Again, uh, this talked about like if you want to exclude the Salesforce partner and customer portal user from prospect assignment, so then you can check or uncheck this. So what is prospect assignment? So we'll talk about it, of course, later point of time, but to give you a bit of clarity, whenever a prospect is getting created in Pardot, if you want that prospect to sync with Salesforce, that prospect must get assigned to a user, right? And in case, if your organization or if your business align with the different business processes, different sales processes, like they're not using the lead or contact, they're using person account, then only you should be enabling this checkbox. But before enabling this checkbox, make sure like you have all the clarity how Pardot is supposed to work with uh, Salesforce person account, right? The next thing is like email login. So like we are sending email from Pardot. If you want to sync that with CRM, I mean the Salesforce sales cloud, you can check that checkbox. If you want to sync the Salesforce engage email with the CRM, you can also check that. If you want to sync the plugin email with CRM, you can also check that. And the next thing, it talks about enable Salesforce email for task creation. If you want to wanted to, um, if you wanted that like product should create a tax, you can check that. You can also check like if you want, I mean that again upon your requirement, enable Salesforce email for assignment rule. Send product notification email when merge is synced with. So there are a lot more things, right? Again, if you want to look into the more detail about it, what are the different things involved and in get into the more detail, you can simply open a new tab and just type in per dot connector settings. And just click on this per dot Salesforce per dot connector settings. You'll get, it will take you to the um, Salesforce per dot official documentation and you'll be getting tons of information here or kind of uh, good detail about each and every settings which are available. Now, coming back to this connector, if you click on this gear icon, you see we have multiple options in here. So we just talked about this edit settings. This is again the resume sync. So you simply, once you're okay with that, I mean, if you're okay with the data syncing back and forth, you simply click on this resume sync and the status will be changed from paused to verified. And again, sometimes we have sync metadata. Overall, Salesforce you know, platform is metadata driven, right? So now suppose if you did some configuration, maybe creating a custom fill or something like, and things are not working, data is not syncing properly, it's always good to click on this sync metadata so that your Pardot and Salesforce metadata will be in the sync, only those which you have configured or which are syncing back and forth. Sync queues will show you like how many prospects are there in the sync queue. You can simply click on this, it will take you to the sync queue. The other thing is like the sync error. See, at the end, Pardot and Salesforce is two different product. So if something has been done in the Salesforce side which are not aligned with the Pardot, could be anything, could be any customization. And when a prospect or prospect data wanted to sync with Salesforce and they're not aligned with the uh, customization we have in Salesforce, they might end up in a sync error. 
One example is like Salesforce lead has some validation rule. But when prospect is trying to sync with Salesforce, they're not meeting that validation rule. So they'll end up in the sync error. So in case, if you know, confirm like, hey, if th there are any prospect which are in the sync error, you can simply come here and click on it. And you'll be able to figure out how many prospect are there in the sync error. And you'll be able to resolve it by looking into the details. Next is asset sync queue. Pardot and Salesforce is now tightly coupled. And now, Product has come native to the Salesforce. We have a lot more flexibility, a lot more new feature, which were which is kind of possible only because now product has come native to the Salesforce side. For example, B two B marketing analytics, engagement history dashboard, all those stuff, right? So if you think like in any of those, like in B two B marketing analytics or engagement history, right? Data is not appropriate. And if you see like here, some asset. So when I'm talking about this asset, this talk about the marketing asset that you might have created in Pardot. It could be a page, it could be, sorry, a form landing page. You might have uploaded a file or something. If you see like some, so any of the asset has not synced, you can click on the sync asset queue and this will do the job for you. So this was the holistic uh, view of the Pardot 